you want to start your Kafka journey. And the first thing that you do usually is either you install by yourself Kafka on-premises or in the cloud of your choice, or for example, use a managed service like the one that my company, Ivan, offers. No matter what, uh, on-premise, installed by yourself or managed, at a certain point, you will arrive to the situation where your Kafka environment is up and running. Congratulations, but now you may start questioning yourself, well, what should I do now? What's my next step? Well, if you are an experienced Kafka developer, you will have the perfect use case that you will use in order to feed Kafka with the perfect streaming data set. But on the other side, if you're new to Kafka, you will probably end up in a situation like this. White, zero. Kafka, as many other data platforms, after you install or you create an instance, it's empty by default. And it makes really complex to understand the beauty of Kafka or the beauty of any data platform if you don't have any data set. With Kafka, this is even worse because it's a streaming platform. So it requires a continuous flow of data in order to understand its beauty. And trust me, finding that kind of input data source is not easy at all. So if you're new to Kafka, you could be in a situation where you don't have any data to test the platform with. Or on the other side, you could be part of a company with kind of the perfect data set, the perfect streaming data set that could fit Kafka well. But because you are trying a new technology, a new vendor, a new cloud provider, you could have rules within your company that stop you from using that data set. Still, I believe a lot of people in here will be programmers. And the beauty of being a programmer is that we can solve this kind of problems by kind of choosing our hero. Depending on our knowledge or our history or the history of our company, we will be able to select the programming language that will help us solving the problem. And I'm listing here three programming languages which have similar libraries to solve the missing data problem, Perl, Go, and Python. We will use Python today because it's widely adopted in the data world, but also because it has a nice Kafka Python library that we can use in order to interact with Kafka. In order to produce data to Kafka, all we need to do is to install the library, create a Kafka producer, and then tell where my Kafka instance is. So I'm telling, look, that my Kafka is in broker ABC, broker one in this case, port 1234. Now it's just time to send some data so I can send a message to Kafka. And if I want to be sure that the message arrives on Kafka, I just flash it. OK, we know how to push data to Kafka, but we still don't have any data. But let me introduce you to Faker. Faker is a Python library that allows us to create fake data. All we need to do is to install it with pip install Faker and then start using it. So we create an instance of Faker. And now if we need, for example, a fake name, we just call the name method. And you can see Lucy, it's a nice fake name. If we need a fake address, well, address method, and there we have a nice address. This is just the surface of what Faker can do. As you can guess, I'm Italian. So I may want to produce Italian sounding name and addresses. Well, I can simply localize the Faker instance passing the Italian parameter. And now every time I call the name function, I will create an Italian name. Uh, Severino Zaccagnini, it's an Italian sounding name. And the address there, it's Incrocio Milanese 58 Olivio Sardo Palermo. It sounds in Italian enough. Faker also has methods in order to control its behavior. So for example, if I want always different names, I just have to prefix the name function with unique. This will make Faker create every time that I invoke the same function, a different name. If on the other side, I want to use fake data to, for example, test my platform. And every time I do a test, I, will, I want always to provide the same kind of input data set. I can also obtain with Faker repeatable results. I just need to, to fix the seed of the random of Faker randomizer, and Faker will generate the same kind of path every time I will re-execute the same code. As of now, we saw just name and addresses, and it's a pretty poor example of fake data because it's just limited. However, Faker has a huge list of pre-built providers, and you 
have the URL here that you can use to find the providers. So we can, for example, create automotive data, geographical data, country, states, uh, zip codes, and whatever. If we are into banking, we can create a lot of, for example, banking transactions or stuff similar to that. And we can even create fake Python code. But of course, we cannot expect Faker to cover all the possible use cases. You can still feel my shock when I saw that Faker couldn't create fake pizza data. But still, Faker is really easy to ex extend. All we need to do is to import the base provider and to start declaring how we want to generate the fake data. So in my case, I want to create fake pizza, so I need a fake pizza name array. Once that I declare which are the valid fake pizza uh, names, I can just create a pizza provider class which extends the base provider. And within the class, it's now time to define a pizza name method which returns a random choice between the available in the array. Now that I created the extension, it's time to use it. So I just add the pizza provider to my Faker instance. I create five pizzas, like in this case, by calling the fake pizza name in an array. And then the beauty of Python or any other language is that I can compose a complex message like a pizza order containing the ID of the order, the shop receiving the order itself, the name of the person with unique, the same with phone number with unique, and also the address where the pizza has to be sent. And then the last line is adding the five pizzas that I created on top to my pizza order. If everything works well, you will end up with something like this, where you have the ID of the order, the shop name receiving the order is Luigi's Pizza, the name of the person, Arsenio Pizzaroni Boccaccio, Italian one, and we have to deliver the pizza to Novara. And as you can see, I didn't only create an extension to enable the creation of fake pizza names, but I also added an extension to add fake additional toppings. And I let this guy, Arsenio Pizzaroni Boccaccio, to order a nice Diavola pizza with a nice banana topping on top. As you can understand, if we now take this code and we create a for loop around it, we have a streaming data source and we can use it to feed Kafka. And in this case, it's pizza, it's silly, I'm Italian, I can do that. If you have another use case, if you are working in a company and you have your data set that you cannot work with, but you still know which fields and what data types you want to push to Kafka, you can achieve the same with using Faker. Some resources now to finish off. First one, Faker documentation. It's amazing, go there, check it out because it's worth your time. You will learn in a few minutes how to start using Faker and how to extend it. Second thing, if you want to understand how to create a fake producer for Kafka using Faker, well, I have wrote a blog post about that. So you can go to Ivanwet's website and check it out. If you don't like reading blog posts, but you, write, you like some running code, there is a public GitHub repository that you can use in order to uh, have in minutes a fake pizza order producer pointing to your Kafka environment. And last thing, if you want to try Kafka, but you don't have Kafka, as I said, Ivan, my company, offers that as a managed service. So I hope that in like five, 10 minutes, I share with you some knowledge about Kafka, Faker, and pizzas. If you have any questions regarding those, I'm here to help you out. Thank you, Francesco. I've never been, honestly, I've never been so excited about fake pizza in my life. And uh, streaming pizza is a concept I just never imagined. Uh, looks, uh, yeah, super easy to get started with. I have one question for you, which is about tooling yep. around uh, managing of that streaming data. So you mentioned a for loop. Is there uh, something you could recommend, or is there is there a, a natural, uh, uh, yeah, uh, complementary tool for controlling the flow, the the quantity and the timing of generating streaming data from Faker? Well, I believe you can add as many complexity as you want once you have the basic provider and. Uh, I cannot suggest any tooling because uh, usually it depends on what you are already using in your company. The beauty of this solution is that it can be adapted to almost any solution that you have in house. So if you are building your application using some sort of framework, 
just add the extra dependency of Faker, and there you go, and you can start using also Kafka. So since the this set of libraries doesn't impose anything, I don't want to limit your imagination in what you can put on top. Understood. Thanks for that. Sounds very flexible.